Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Cal Marquis, and I am with Bywater Solutions. And today we're going to talk about um, digital marketing and Aspen Discovery. Um, so I'm joined by a couple members of the Bywater team today. Um, we have uh, Jordan Fields, who's our Aspen um, product librarian. There she is. <laughs> And also um, we have Elise, who is our partner engagement specialist. She takes care of all of our outreach and marketing. So it's very appropriate that she's here with us today too. Um, and we'll, they'll be helping monitor any um, questions in the chat. Um, and I'm just gonna dive right in because I prepared about an hour's worth of stuff to go over because I love marketing, I love outreach. Um, so I'm gonna talk really fast. I also have a cold, so I apologize. I have trusty Gatorade here um, <laughs> and we're gonna get through this. but. Uh, please ask questions um, and let's dive in. So let me just go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to present. All right. So marketing. So with Aspen Discovery, we always talk about um, our four goals. So if you have been to one of these webinars, if you've gone through an implementation with us, um, we love talking about our goals all the time. <laughs> so today we're going to really be focusing on the top two goals, which are um, with Aspen, we try to focus our developments and our functionality and our trainings on um, these two topics, the top two that have to do with marketing. So we want to make sure that Aspen can maximize patron usage of all your library materials. Um, something that we always talk about is that libraries are so much more than just books. Um, so your library catalog should be so much more than just a place where users are looking for them. Um, we also want to make sure that um, there's an, a complete integration in Aspen, like a little home for all of your um, e-content and also all of your uh, physical materials. Um, so we're really going to focus on those today when we're talking about marketing and the ways that you can reach patrons through your library catalog. So let's just talk a little bit first off um, about library marketing. Uh, this can be a whole like few hour topic on its own, um, but I wanted to talk through um, a little bit of my background. I used to work um, primarily in public service and outreach, community partnerships and public libraries. Um, so these are the things that I'm thinking about um, when I'm looking at the different functionalities and features available in Aspen Discovery. Um, and just talking in libraries in general about your brand. Um, I don't remember a lot in library school about you know, them talking about your library as a brand, but then when I started working in public libraries, I realized that like so much about the day-to-day the -day stuff that we do is all about building your brand and, and community outreach and um, you know, getting out into the community and talking with folks about all the library has to offer. Um, so there is so much like actual marketing and, and business kind of minded um, like skills that are, are involved in our everyday um, workflows. So your library is your brand. So how do we build a brand um, and how do we get the word out about all that libraries have to offer? So you should be looking at all of your tools that you, you know, that you pay for and that you are um, spending time to, to build um, and bringing in those different marketing um, aspects into those tools. So I love to look at this through an Aspen lens. Um, so not only how do we engage our current audi audiences, but how do we attract new users? Um, so I kind of divided this up into how I think about it um, into, th into three sections. So um, the actual demographics and the people that are using our tools and using our resources. So um, who is in your library? Who is in your actual physical space? And then who are the users on your, um, that are using your you know, OPAC online? Um, and how are you ret retaining them? How are you keeping them engaged? How are you showing them new things um, to keep them coming back for more? Uh, and then also, who do you see when you go to the grocery store or you go to the park um, that you don't see in the library and why aren't they there? And how do you reach them? How can you tailor um, things like your catalog or your website or your social media presence to attract those users, to reach those users? Um, and then also, who are your cheerleaders? Who are your partners? Who are your stakeholders? Um, who are the people that you that are already going to bat for you um, that you want to keep happy? So your community partnerships, um, your other like county or city organizations, if you're in that sort of structure. 
Um, what about your friends of the library groups? Like, what are you offering them um, to kind of like keep them happy and um, keep them engaged? Also, who are you talking to? I like to think of this as like the wow. Um, you know, when you, you tell someone, I work in a library or um, our library has, you know, you don't need Audible. We have Overdrive or we have Hoopla. Um, what are those moments of wow that you continually hear and see from people? Um, we, we know everything about our libraries. We can kind of get stuck maybe like in a cycle of um, not realizing how amazing we are and, and have what awesome things that we offer. Um, so like what continues to surprise people? So what's new, what's unique? Um, are you circulating a, a set of American Girl dolls? Um, do you have museum passes? Um, you know, are, did you just get um, wonder books like box books or playaways or launch pads? Um, there's something new, it seems like every few months in the library world that's just like outstanding and amazing that we have to market and we have to, um, you know, share with, with our communities. And then what's something that you think, like you nerd out over, like is there like a database that you love um, or something that you've felt that's really valuable that you find yourself you know, at, at the book club or at the party or, you know, wherever you are, where you're like, did you know the library has this? Um, so I like to think about those types of things, like those, those like wow moments when I think about what I'm trying to market. And then the last area I usually think about with library marketing is like the actual physical, physical space or physical um, and like imagery marketing that you're already doing in your library. So um, I remember when I was first a librarian, one of the tasks that I got assigned, probably because no one else wanted to manage it, was like the bulletin board. Um, so I had to make sure that the bulletin board, if anything went on it, like the physical bulletin board in the, in the lobby, um, that you know it was approved, it was a partnership. So there's people coming in that are dropping off things um, that they wanna put up on that bulletin board. So is there something on that board that could live also online that you, you know, you put up once um, in your catalog, for example, or on your website. Um, and what are you printing? Is there something that um, you're all, you're printing out your monthly calendar, you know, but then at the end of the month, you're just throwing away a huge stack of it. Is that something that maybe you could integrate into um, your library catalog, for example? And then I don't know about you all, but I know that every reference desk I've ever worked at has that like hidden binder that's at the bottom of the filing cabinet um, that has somebody's like printed out Goodreads list or New York Times list from 20 years ago. Um, so if you still have that binder, is there something in that binder that would be useful for patrons um, that you could put, you know, somewhere more publicly uh, online for more people to discover? Um, another example was like faxing services or notary services, or, um, you know, do you offer passports or, or, you know, there's all kinds of services that libraries offer, proctoring. Um, is there a place in your, you know, digital space um, where you could use, um, instead of taking it out of that binder, uh, that you could show your users? So today I'm going to talk about like some of the different ways um, that you can take a lot of what I just talked about here when we're thinking about marketing and actually put it into Aspen and your, your catalog that you're already you know, using and subscribing to um, so that you can pull in all these different areas and offerings that libraries have. So I'm going to show you some sites. So we talked about building a brand and like what that actually physically looks like. Um, so I wanted to just show you a few different examples of Aspen sites um, where it, they really have built their brand or through their Aspen site. So um, when we're talking about, you know, brand and logos, um, you know, you might have a brand guidelines that you have to work with or fonts that you use, um, you know, like hex colors and things like that. Um, so throughout Aspen, you can customize um, any of these um, colors and headers um, and no two Aspen sites look the same. So you're not just getting like a cookie cutter OPAC page. That's the same, you know, if you if you log in at one library in, you know, one part of the country or the other part of the country, this can be completely customized to represent your brand. Um, so I just randomly chose a few different types um, that are just very unique. They're all using the same platform. Um, so we have an example from Wisconsin Valley Library Services. We have one from Darien Library. We have one from Knox Library. Um, and you can see again, like all the colors, the logos, things like header, footer um, can all be customized. 
Um, and a lot of this can be done without any knowledge of CSS or custom code. Um, but if you do know that, if you have a design staff, um, if you have that IT person on your team, uh, there's easy place in Aspen just to go ahead and like copy and paste that code in um, to make the design more reflective of your other platforms. So like your library website um, and your social media, it can be a more seamless experience for users. Also just the last one, I just wanted to take a look at completely different. So um, all over the spectrum, uh, this is more of a research library. So they're directing patrons right to um, some research, re research resources right at the beginning. Um, we talked about that libraries are, you know, so much more than just books. We have all kinds of different services to offer. But one way in libraries that we do market to our patrons is through in library displays. And I don't know about you all in your workflows, but like I know that we would, people love making library displays. I loved making library displays. I would take time to make, you know, little custom signs and, you know, sometimes we'd make little like graphics and um, book lists and make bookmarks. And, you know, we're spending time pulling pulling lists and then pulling like a cart, making sure we come in and that we're refreshing those displays, that there's someone there when you're off that can, you know, um, making sure that they still look good. So what if you could do the same thing, um, but in your, your visual space, so on your, your digital space online? So in Aspen, we have browse categories that act as the same way. So um, this is what we call browse categories here. And then we also have sub browse categories I specifically pulled Jackson's as an example because I love that they um, they make browse categories or their virtual displays um, that relate to, um, I love that they have this connection to their blog. So if you go to their actual, um, like Jackson County Library Services blogs, they have a blog article. And then at the end of the blog article, they point you back um, to one of these browse categories or book lists. And I just love that, that seamless like marketing integration. These also would be great things to share, you know, in a newsletter um, that you or your, your email marketing or on your social media. So um, that that really like thinking about how you can kind of like kill two birds with one stone, or when you look at all of your different um, things that you subscribe to and think about how do I connect the dots back to my resources and my materials. And browse categories is a great way to do this. Um, also, if you keep if you have these as your in library displays why not take just a couple extra minutes and you can build one of these browse categories from a search or from a list. And then, you know what the best part is, they reshelve themselves. <laughs> so you don't have to actually go back to the shelf and physically put these books away. Um, you can set these to expire. So you can um, start a browse category, say July 1st, and then at the end of the month, the browse category will expire and you can go ahead and um, have something else reappear. Here's just one more example of this. I love that they use a trending topics. So you can make something like a Bridgerton reader like because season two is out right now. Um, things that I've seen that have been really cool um, when Eric Carl passed away, unfortunately, um, libraries were able to spin up um, a browse category in just a few minutes because um, you know, when things are timely or like in the news or, you know, there's something about an author or there's a new movie coming out where everyone's interested in a title. Um, this is a really quick and easy way to make that virtual display. Um, right now, summer reading is about to start. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that as well. So um, another way, if you saw on this website, uh, that libraries can, can market or pull in additional resources for users is to add menu links. So these are completely customizable. They can go out to anywhere that you want to point a user to. Um, in this example, um, City of Burleson has put summer reading right here. So if you click on this link, it takes them right out to their summer reading page. So a really awesome thing about Aspen is that you can also build custom pages within Aspen. So we have a functionality called Web Builder. Um, I would love to see more libraries using it. It seems like there's a lot that go like all or nothing. We have a bunch of libraries that will use it as their entire web presence. So it'll be their um, one URL for their library website and also their library catalog. But what you can also do to supplement your catalog is create web pages that you link at the top. So I just made this yesterday. Um, like I said, I've been sick. I was in bed. I made this in 10 minutes. Um, I went to the summer reading um, 
website. I pulled off the logo for this year. Um, I made up a little bit of information um, that for my fake library, uh, I put together a few um, spotlights, collection spotlights. Um, so just, I did a search to create these. Um, it's, I selected that I wanted this to be horizontal. Aspen does all the like code generation for you. Um, and this page is just built out of um, a series of cells in rows. I know nothing about coding um, or, you know, HTML or anything like that. So this was all really like drag and drop. Um, so I embedded a logo. I put in some text. Um, I inserted um, a couple quick um, searches that I did. I narrowed this down to adult titles relating to the ocean. Uh, and then I also did one for kids where I just uh, did a search for ocean and then narrowed it down to juvenile materials. Um, and in this case, we have um, a library who is using a calendar integration. So, uh, you know, a great way um, to advertise your programs is right within your catalog. Um, in Aspen, and I'll show you this a little bit more, um, we have an integration with uh, LibCal and also Library Market. So if you subscribe to the, one of those two calendars, um, we just put your URL and your credentials into Aspen and it'll pull in all of your um, calendar data. So I'm gonna show you that in a second, but another thing we have in Aspen are custom forms. So um, I was able to embed a little um, summer reading survey that I made in just a couple minutes um, right into my page. So all of this could just be linked right at the top of your, um, right at the top of your catalog. Again, no coding knowledge needed. Um, just think of all the possibilities. Uh, I did, while I'm on this topic too, um, wanted to show you uh, another one that I created for your friends of the library. So when I was talking about your cheerleaders and your stakeholders, um, right now, do you have real estate somewhere for your friends um, to advertise their book sales? Um, do you have a place that you point them to volunteer. Um, I know I worked for a large county system and a lot of our, our website was out of our control. So our, we, we, it wasn't easy for us just to say to the county, our friends of the library need a page on the county website, like that wasn't a thing. Um, but in Aspen, uh, yesterday, again, while I was sick in bed, I made a friends of the library page in the same kind of way. So. Think, um, think about the way that you could, um, you know, go to your library board or your library friends and, and show them something like this, um, where, you know, I brought their logo, I put their volunteer form right here. Um, I have information about donations that they're receiving. Um, in Aspen, if you subscribe to, um, we integrate with about, I think like six different e-commerce um, platforms right now. This one's set up with PayPal, um, but if I click on make a donation, it takes me to a donation form and I can take donations right through my library catalog um, for my friends of the library. Um, so just thinking like what power this gives a library when you're talking with those, those cheerleaders and those stakeholders in your community. <laughs> I guess I should check. Are there any questions so far too? And again, I only have 30 minutes, so that's why I'm kind of like powering through this, um, but please stop me if you do have any questions. Um, I just wanted to touch again on the, um, these spotlights that we talked about. Um, these can be created from an, a list or a search in Aspen. Um, and these are something that I said that they um, are, made, are automatically created. So um, anywhere that you can embed an iframe, you can embed um, a collection spotlight. So on your library website, um, on your blog, um, some, I know like some like email marketing software lets you embed things like iframe. So you, when you create one in Aspen, um, it'll just give you the iframe code and you just copy that right into your um, other resource. Again, you can also just make a, a page directly in Aspen if you wanted to highlight these. Um, but this will take the users right out to um, where they can actually either check it out online, um, see information about if it's available at your location. Um, so that's just a really easy um, integration into like book lists and searches. Um, let's talk again about the catalog. So, or the calendar, I'm sorry. So we know, and we talk about meeting users where they are in marketing all the time. Um, so we have to think in libraries, in our catalogs, 
users are just seeing a search bar. Um, and I know like at one, at one of the, or all the libraries I've worked at in the past are in library computers were set where our homepage was our library catalog. So all the time people would be walking up and they would be searching Google or Gmail or you know whatever they were looking for. Um, they just saw the search bar in our catalog and they thought that they were searching you know, up here in um, like in a search interface. So why not use that to our advantage or, or use the advantage of, you know, users maybe getting confused between a library website versus, versus a library catalog. Um, and, and when users are searching for a certain keyword, connecting them to a, additional resources that your library has. So for instance, um, let's say I'm interested in yoga and I don't know, you know, I don't even know that the library has programs in yoga or, you know, that they might have videos on yoga. Um, maybe at first I'm just thinking I want a book on yoga. So I come in and I do a search in Aspen for yoga. So, oh, wow, I had no idea that we had e-magazines that I can check out the current issue right now in Overdrive. Amazing. Um, I can also preview that. I had like no idea um, that that was available. But then I come down here and explore more and I see, oh, cool. There's actually a, a chair yoga class avail at, at um, Westover on May 23rd. That's really soon. I didn't even know the library offered programs. Um, with these calendar integrations with um, LibCal and Library Market, the user is connected with resources and or they connects their resources and events right in one place. Um, so if I were to click on this, it would take me right out to more information. Um, this is a LibCal integration. So I could also register right through the calendar um, and I could get more information like, oh, I need to bring a water bottle. Um, and positive vibes. Um, and if there's information if I wanted to contact someone at the library, but this is all through my library catalog. So I just love that I can get a book, a video, a magazine, and I can find out about a program all in one spot. The great thing about the calendar integration as well um, is that it actually pulls in a separate uh, events portal. So you can um, see all the different events available at the library. So now that I know the library has events, since um, I was just exposed to this, I had no idea. Now I can say, oh, you know, I have a, I have a kid. I didn't know idea you guys had story time um, or crafts. Um, so it's really nice to put all those things in one place for a user. Um, let's look at, let's talk about those cheerleaders again, because I think that's one of the most under, underutilized areas that I see um, when talking with libraries. We, we always, you know, we're pretty well versed in, in promoting things like Hoopla or Overdrive at this point. Um, our, obviously our physical materials, we have that down, we make gorgeous displays, you know, we have newsletters, we have read-alikes, all of that. Um, but I think sometimes in libraries we struggle with, with knowing, um, you know, how to make connections with the other people in our community. Um, so I like that in Aspen we can highlight things like museum passes. Um, so I just wanted to pull up the, the slow um, San Luis Obispo Library. They have their California State Museum Pass or Parks Pass um, right here, as well as they have this um, like energy efficient toolkit that they're advertising. Um, so maybe you partner with your local, you know, county utilities um, and they have some sort of energy device that you check out, um, but it's really underutilized and no one really knows about it. You can highlight that right in Aspen. Um, I also just wanted to show off uh, Darien's museum passes as well. So they're actually showing the front facade of the different locations in their community. I think, you know, going to a potential partner and talking with them and showing this off to them, you know, they would want to be featured in front of your, you know, tens of thousands, millions in some areas of patrons that are using your catalog. Um, that's a really big tool for, you know, for advocating for libraries and advocating for, for partnerships. Um, the Uinta Library in um, Utah has a strong partnership with their local history museum. So right on their front page, uh, they have, let me go back to their homepage, sorry. They have a local history um, museum link that I talked about, but what if you could come to one of your, your partners in your community and say, you know, I can give you a section of my, you know, we're, we're gonna be doing programming together. I'm gonna have book lists, you know, with you um, that we curate together. Um, you know, I'm going to show off your databases. Like, what if you could come to your local history, you know, department or or uh, center, and you could build something like this with them? Um, so they have all kinds of links here that take you out. This is a custom page that they built. 
So it's a center for stories. They have their local area of folklore, for example. Um, I just think this is really powerful um, to, to give and provide that, you know, public facing um, place online for some of those services. Because I bet, I bet those other community places in your, um, in your area, like your, you know, your other county organizations, um, your community resources, they're always looking for partners as well. Um, so why not show this to them and say, you know what, I think this would be really great. We can touch up with the menu link. Um, we can put you on our calendar and, and um, sorry, I'm like my voice. <laughs> we can put you on our calendar and we can uh, help advertise and, you know, form these partnerships together. Um, another way uh, we like to do this in Aspen um, is with placards. So placards, I like to think of them as like tiny little billboards um, in your catalog. So we're talking about free advertising, um, not just for your um, resources like we were talking about, your databases, but also your partnerships. So when I showed you earlier this um, Friends of the Library uh, page that I created, um, when I go ahead and I search volunteer, just generally in my library catalog, I've created this placard here. So a user came into my catalog to search volunteer. Is it a teen looking for volunteer hours for um, a scholarship? Is it, um, you know, someone in my community who's looking um, to help out, um, you know, or was I just looking for a book on volunteers? Like, I don't know, um, but I want to set up my users for success and I want to tie them to these other resources. So um, I've seen this with, um, I've seen this with like job opportunities. So does your county have a, you know, a job board and you have people coming in and searching job or career or resume? Um, you could create a placard like this and you could um, link it out to um, your job board. So I've linked it out to this page that I've created um, in this case. Um, so how these placards are created, I made this in Canva. Canva is a great free tool um, that libraries can get a um, free um, subscription to as a nonprofit. You can get a free pro version by just going to canva.com um, and filling out the little like application. But I created this, I uploaded this image to um, Aspen and then I just linked a URL to it. So, and then I set trigger words like volunteer, friends, um, thinking about like what users would be searching for. And then I set this picture to show and this URL placard to show um, whenever that keyword came about. Um, I think we have some questions. Um, so I'm gonna stop just really quickly and take a look. So, okay. Can you share something directly from Aspen directly to your library's social media pages? Yes, so in Aspen, um, all of our URLs um, are static, so they won't be changing. So if you wanted to um, share a URL for your um, like record, or if you had a list that you wanted to share out, let me show you some of the list integrations in Aspen. So if you wanted to share, for example, this, this list, you could just share um, this link directly out onto your social media. Um, the same with if you use things like um, like a library aware or a different platform um, where you're pulling in um, different like titles that you want to show um, on your like newsletters or email blasts, um, you can definitely do that and we can help you set up um, those URLs to make those show appropriately. Um, is there any ability to share video on Aspen? Yes. So when we're looking at those web builder pages, let me pop back to Uenta because they have one right here where we were looking at. Um, you can embed either YouTube or um, is it Vimeo? I think that's how you say it. Uh, videos directly into Aspen. Um, so this again was just um, created um, by the library with one of those web builder pages. Uh, and this, they, they just copied the URL directly um, from this video. Um, into Aspen. Um, and you could do multiple, like if you wanted to link out to, I know, especially like when libraries were closed for a little while, a couple of years, a lot of libraries recorded their programs. Um, so you could have a page just created about um, all of your different recorded programs, and then you could link out to those videos or embed them right into Aspen. Okay, I saw you share a carousel of events. Can you share more about what that is? What is that in Aspen? Yes. So I think... Does Yenta have this on theirs too? I'll go back to my page that I made. Um, it was for, 
Oh, where is it? It is, where did I call it? Summer reading. Um, oh, it was dive in. Okay, so the question was about this carousel. So it's actually, it's really cool. It's the same way you build um, this collection spotlight is what we call it or cares. I mean, a lot of people refer to it as carousel. Um, you build this the same way from a search. So when we went into our events search, um, again, right now, this would be if you have a library um, LibCal or library market integration, um, but you could go in and you could filter, you know, maybe you wanted to show off all of your book clubs, for example, you would just scroll down and you would just create a spotlight. And that's really it. So you would say, you know, book club events. Um, and once you create the spotlight, um, it's going to give you a code that you can just go ahead and copy and paste this into, you know, your website, website page, um, anywhere that you can put in an iframe, you can share this out. There's also seven different options of layout that you can choose from. So um, it doesn't automatically, it's just a drop down and you can select which carousel um, and where, like which way you want it to display. I cannot believe that our time is already up and I feel like I only scratched the surface of what I want to talk about today. Um, but if you have any questions about marketing or you just love to talk about this type of stuff, um, my name again is Cal Marquise and you can email me at cal at bywatersolutions.com. Um, next month, uh, Jordan will be talking about more about personalizing your interactions in Aspen um, directly to those different groups of users that we were talking about kind of today. Um, here's our contact information. Again, 30 minutes, probably not enough. We'll definitely cover this topic again, but I would also love to hear from anyone. Um, I can also stay on if there's any additional questions uh, that anyone wants to ask.